let's talk about the mixing process and what we can learn about the properties of the solution from the partial molar properties. So, some thermodynamic variables like T and P and V and S have a definite zero point. Right? We understand what it means for those things to be zero. Others don't, right? The internal energy, the Helmholtz free energy, the enthalpy gives free energy. These have no zero point. In some cases, like the enthalpy, right, we, we arbitrarily define there to be a zero, but they don't sort of naturally. And that's fine because in the mixing process, we are interested in how these things change, not necessarily what their exact numeric value is. So let's look at how we would calculate those changes during mixing. So in mixing, we start with some before state and go to some after state. And so we need to know how those are defined. So let's assume that we are mixing uh, water and ethanol. And we end up with a solution that is water and ethanol, right? So there's some volume associated with the water. There's some volume associated with the ethanol, and there's some volume of the solution. So the before state, this is what we also call our reference state, or sometimes I will call this the components. Right? sort of in their unmixed state. And these are in some specified phase, right? Here, they're liquid. Uh, they're pure. That's another thing to note about them. Uh, and they're kind of in their own container, right? They don't have to obviously be in their container if it's a solid or something, but that's how we'll think about them. And then the after state is these things mixed together. The properties of the reference state, or the initial state, use the subscript, this little uh, zero. So this indicates that they are pure and that this is the initial state. So if I want to describe any of these extensive properties for the entire system in the reference state, this is the symbol that I use, and this is really just the weighted sum over all of the components of that property. So let's say it's the volume. So this is the volume of component K in its pure state times the number of moles of K. All right, so this is just a weighted sum. So if I have one liter of water, uh, it, sorry, if I have one mole of water and I have one mole of ethanol, then I add the molar volume of water to the molar volume of ethanol, and that's the total volume of this stuff in the before state. Right. So let's revisit our definition uh, for mixing problem. Right. So we can define the change in B associated with mixing, and this is for the total value, to be the value of B for the solution, or in the mixed state, minus the reference state, right? Uh, in terms of a mole, one mole, so if we have only one mole, then we can do this on a per mole basis, so then we would just write delta B of mixing is B of the solution minus B of the components, okay? So what we want to do now is we want to find a way that we can relate the um, mixing properties or the properties of the solution to the partial molar properties. We want to relate either B of the solution or delta B mixing and these are 
uh, they're not equivalent, but we can find one from the other, right? If we just know the value of b for the component. We want to relate these to the partial molar properties. This table shows how we can do that. And you'll get a copy of this in class, so don't worry about writing all of this down. What this table shows over here is uh, how we can calculate the property B. So that would be like this guy right here. Uh, and the first column is for an arbitrary quantity. So you'll notice that we have B with the uh, little apostrophe there or per mole of the system over here and so we just have B without it right so we can calculate this and we already saw this equation before we calculate this based on the weighted sum of the partial molar properties okay so if you compare this equation here with this equation over here the main difference is that we replace the number of moles instead with a mole fraction. Okay, So here we still have the weighted sum of partial molar B, but now it's weighted by the composition. Right? Our next row is giving us the change in B, so how B changes if we add more stuff. The third row gives us delta B of mixing, and the last row gives us how delta B of mixing changes if we add more stuff. Okay. So just to wrap this up, let's add in a reminder now about how we defined B. So this is a partial molar property. If it's easier for you, you can go through and think about every single one of these Bs being replaced by V, the volume, because again, volume is something that we can actually kind of wrap our head around. So the partial molar B is how the total value of B changes as we add more stuff, keeping T and P and the number of moles of other things constant. Right? One of these that will come in particularly handy for us down the road is the partial molar Gibbs free energy. So this is how G changes as we add more of k at constant t, p, and other n. So this is sort of an overview of mixing properties and how we can connect our mixing properties to the partial molar properties.